Tamor McIntyre was born June 16, 2000 in California. His father, Kevin Beverly, was a gang member from Compton, and his mom was part of the Baby Insane Crips gang in Long Beach. This would unfortunately lead to his dad's imprisonment during Tamor's youth. With his dad behind bars, his mother would do her best to raise him and his sister while he was away, but without a father figure around, it was hard for him to find guidance. Playing football, listening to Soldier Boy and Chief Keef were some of the only distractions he had for his frustration that was building up. At 8 years old, his mom moved them to Las Vegas for about a year and a half before his father was finally released from prison. In hopes of providing a better life for their family, they moved once again to the east side of Arlington, Texas. He and his friends would form a rap group called the Daytona Boys. The group consisted of Santana Sage, Pimps, and Tamor himself, who would rap under the name TK. The group started recording their first songs together throughout 2014. Within just one year, they were already doing small live performances around Texas, and TK was releasing solo tracks like Biff Zanin. Feeling like the group was on the right track, they continued to push their music as they were getting a small amount of recognition. Although music was the focus, TK states his parents weren't always around and he had to provide for himself, sometimes even finding places to stay at night. The Daytona boys wouldn't last long as a group due to their reckless behavior that would ultimately cost an innocent girl her life. The fatal shooting involved an exchange of words between two carloads of people who just left a party New Year's morning 2016. On December 31st, 2016, the Daytona boys were having another show in Arlington. After the performance, they left the show and pulled up to a red light where another vehicle was stopped. The car next to them was being driven by a female college student, along with three other passengers. The Daytona boys attempted to catcall the females at the red light until a male passenger rolled down the window and threatened to beat the Daytona boys up. Santana Sage, who was driving the group, rolled down his window, pointed a gun, and fired two shots. One of the bullets would hit the driver of that car. 21-year-old Sarah Mushlanger was pronounced dead. We, the jury, find the defendant, Eric Jamal Johnson, guilty of the offense of murder. Just days later, Santana Sage would be arrested for the murder, but TK and Pimps would not be charged with anything since they were only passengers and minors at the time. Some would say their lack of punishment for even being involved in this type of event only made them feel more invincible. The Daytona boys would break up after Sage was sentenced to 44 years behind bars. Takei would continue to get even more involved with the streets as he was still attempting to get his rap career off the ground. Everything was about to change though. On July 26, 2016, Takei along with six other people had formulated a plan to hit a lick on a house they knew had drugs in it. There was a house located on the 1500 block of Mansfield, Texas where a man named Zachary Ballou was staying. He was believed to have drugs and money on him. They would have two girls who were already familiar with the target get inside the house and make it seem like they just wanted to smoke and chill. TK and a few other men would be waiting close by for a text message from the girls on when to storm the house. They planned to take whatever money and loot they could find and leave. This house was already on record for multiple police reports for drug related activity, leaving them to believe they could get away with this. Unfortunately the day of, things quickly spiraled out of control. When the girls arrived, they were surprised to see a lot more people in the home than they expected. This pushed the plans back as they waited hours for the right opportunity to unlock the door for TK and the others. The girls began to become anxious and were acting suspicious as the day turned to night. Around 10 p.m. they finally had enough and decided to go ahead with their plan. They unlocked the door, sent the text message, and shortly after four men stormed in with guns out. They pointed them at both Zachary and his roommate Ethan. As TK and the others began looking for the cash, they came short of finding anything. Tension then rose as they became impatient waiting for them to hand it over. They then replied that they didn't have any money. After a few minutes of hesitation, shots rang off, wounding Zachary and killing 21-year-old Ethan Walker. With so many people involved, it didn't take long for the police to charge all seven with capital murder. He was brought in for questioning in this confession tape, where he admitted to being present but was not the one who shot the gun. Because he was underage, TK would be placed on house arrest while he awaited his trial. He continued to release music, but after 8 months on house arrest, he took to the internet to tweet this before cutting his ankle monitor and going on the run. 
While on the run, his tweet would begin to circulate online, and people began to wonder who this 16-year-old kid was. His first stop was in San Antonio, where he seemed to disregard the fact that he was wanted for murder. While in a Chick-fil-A parking lot, he got into an altercation with the photographer he had planned on setting up. When he resisted and wouldn't give up his camera and equipment, he tried to flee the car. He then hopped on the hood and began smashing the windshield out of frustration. Instead of pulling off, TK allegedly got out of the car and shot 23-year-old Mark Anthony, leaving his body in the street. TK and his affiliates then ditched the car in a nearby restaurant before picking up a new car where they would head to New Jersey. While in the Elizabeth, New Jersey area, he was staying with friends recording new music. By now, US Marshals were aggressively looking for him. He was wanted for two murders as well as an alleged robbery of a 65-year-old man in New Jersey. While in hiding, he recorded new music as well as videos. One of the songs he recorded was titled The Race, where he literally rapped about being on the run. As each day passed, his name was circulating a little more as people were tuning into this story. Finally, on June 30th, 2017, after three months of being on the run, he was captured and taken into custody. The same day he was caught, he released a music video for The Race online, where it would go viral due to the situation at hand. The court judge decided that he should be held here in the jail with the adults, where hashtags and millions of video views won't have much influence. As the media began to circulate this crazy timeline of events, the song continued to go even more viral. He surprisingly even got co-signs from other major artists, who either used the free TK hashtag or remixed the song themselves. Because he wasn't convicted yet, nobody really understood the severity of his crimes. Label executives who were also taking notice of his viral success were beginning to reach out, as his mixtape Santana World was released just a month after his arrest. He ended up signing a deal with the label 88 Classic, which is associated with Sony Records. Some believe this is due to them trying to hide the fact that they were endorsing a man on trial for murder. Although he was now 17, he would be tried as an adult. His lawyer would go public saying he was confident TK would walk, due to no evidence of him being the one to pull the trigger in either event. While behind bars, he would get into more trouble for having a cell phone and threatening to kill a guard, simply struggling to leave that mindset behind. Due to the circumstances, he was then moved to a solitary confinement in a maximum security jail. In July of 2019, his trial finally started, where he pleaded not guilty to capital murder, but guilty for robbery. Despite his lawyer's defense, he was found guilty and given over 55 years behind bars. Although to the uninformed, it may seem easy to shout free take a without the understanding of what he actually did. His misguided childhood is sad, but should never be used as an excuse for the lives he took part in ending.